Well, hello and good day to you online. My name is Brian Beal. I'm the Next Steps pastor here, and we are excited that you're worshiping with us online for this special July weekend. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be online with us. And if you're watching at pccfw.tv, we would encourage you to take a moment and click on the connect link above the window. And that opens up a connect card. It's a way for you to communicate with us. My team gets all of those. And we would love to know how we can serve your family. We would love to know that you were here today. But also if you have a prayer request, you can list that right there on that card anytime. And we will have a team praying for you. Another way that you can participate with us this weekend is through giving. And there's gonna be a number of ways that you can give on the screen. And even though you're watching this from home, this is a way for us to respond as we follow Jesus to hold what he has given us with open hands. And it's something that my wife and I, we take seriously. We teach our kids about this. And uh, I hope you're ready to step into a moment of generosity here at Pathway. We're gonna take some time, we're gonna sing some songs and we're gonna open up our Bibles and Pastor Ron's gonna share with us a message today. So let's get ready to sing together. Hey, welcome to Church Online, guys. We are so excited that you have joined us. Wherever you're at, will you just join us and sing out loud to our great God as we declare who he is and that he has made us new. Hello. 
have to praise your name, Jesus, and worship you. God, I pray that we would just listen to your voice, God, that you would speak to us today. Jesus, you are worthy of our praise, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, welcome, everybody. So glad that uh, we all get to be a part of this kind of July 4th weekend. It's a huge weekend. I mean, you think about it, you know, 4th of July is really all about freedom. It's all about our liberty. Certainly we think about uh, those moments that our liberty was fought for and and uh, what that gives us, obviously the freedom to do as well as not to do. And so I was thinking this weekend about that. I was thinking about liberty, I was thinking about freedom, and I was thinking about just kind of a, a story within the gospels that relates to someone who longed to find his own certain freedom, but in the midst of trying to find his freedom, he actually ended up on the opposite side of that, feeling actually pretty bound up internally. And uh, Jesus shows up and the man finds freedom. And it's a pretty remarkable story. It's one that probably all of you, most of you that are watching online this weekend, you're familiar with the story. And it's a story of uh, that Luke writes about, Luke 19. It's that moment when Jesus encounters that short little man by the name of Zacchaeus. And this is what the gospel says to us in Luke 19. I'm just going to read the text for you here in these next few minutes. Follow along on the screen if you want to. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was just passing through. And a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. And he was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. And he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed into a sycamore tree to see him. And since Jesus was coming that way, and when Jesus reached the spot, 
he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. And so he came down at once and he welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this and they began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham, for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. I really, I love this moment with Jesus. This is um, actually a really, really uh, in, important encounter that Jesus has with Zacchaeus. It's not by chance. It's not happenstance. Uh, I believe it's actually a planned encounter. And I think there's some, some ways in which actually Luke brings that out to us as he, as he writes this in his gospel. Um, Jesus, it says, is just passing through Jericho, but actually he wasn't just passing through. Think about this. Jesus just didn't do anything. You know, he always had a purpose behind what he was doing. And so this moment of going through Jericho is actually kind of a final encounter that Jesus is going to have with a man who everyone within the community would call a sinner. Not only just a sinner, but he would call him, they would call him really kind of the chief of all sinners, actually, because of the fact that he was this tax collector who was a chief tax collector. It's kind of interesting. As I thought about this, I thought about that moment in my life when I really believed that I met Jesus, that I encountered Jesus, and it was a spot. There was a spot that I'll never forget. For me, it was a spot sitting beside my bed late at night, realizing that my life was not, look, was not working out, that, that I was looking for freedom, but in the midst of trying to find freedom, actually I found myself all bound up and, and really searching for something of deeper meaning. And it's in that moment that I, I really surrendered my life to Jesus. It was at that spot. Um, Zacchaeus has a spot, and he's up in the sycamore tree. And Jesus shows up, right under that tree at the moment when Zacchaeus is sitting in that tree, and as one author said so well, half hoping that Jesus will see him and half hoping that Jesus won't. And, and Jesus does. Jesus sees him within that moment. And there's so many things we know about Zacchaeus. Uh, we know that he was, uh, he was a despised guy, that the Jewish people of that day, because of the fact that he had really kind of partnered with the Romans to tax the Jewish people out of whatever they could tax them out of, he actually sold, sold his own to the Romans. He was a Jewish man who had this greed and this longing to have some financial freedom, I guess you could say, or to have whatever he wanted to have. And, uh, and so he kind of bought into the lie of giving up his own people for the sake of this Roman tax. And not only was he just a tax, wasn't just a tax collector, he was, he was more than just a tax collector. He was the chief of all tax collectors. So he was kind of getting a per diem from all these other guys that were collecting taxes from all these other Jewish people, and he was living high and mighty on the end. We, we also know because he was despised by everyone that was, that was there, people really didn't want him around. And again, people considered him to be a big sinner, but not only that, but uh, he was a short guy. Uh, the text is really clear that because of his size, his short stature, that he couldn't see above the crowd, and so he made his way up into the sycamore tree. Kind of a Danny DeVito kind of character is what we see with Zacchaeus in this moment. And, and there might have even been some issues going on because of his size. Who knows? We, we have no idea what was taking place there. But, but Jesus, more than anything, not only knew what he did, not only knew his reputation, Jesus knew him by name. If you notice that when Jesus gets to that sycamore tree, he calls him by name. And I think that's really important that when Jesus reaches the spot, that he, he knows exactly who, Jesus, who Zacchaeus is, and he knows exactly where, Jack, where Zacchaeus is at, and he, he doesn't say, hey, you come down. He doesn't say, hey, chief tax collector, come down. He, I think in a very intimate way, says, hey, Zacchaeus, can you come on down from that tree? And I think that's important for us. Um, Jeremiah, Jeremiah talks about the fact that before I formed you in your mother's womb, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And in many ways, we could actually look at that and say that I knew you, I knew you by name. Hebrews 4.13 says that there is nothing that's hidden from the sight of God. That not only does he know us by name, as Psalm 139 says, he's, he's, he molded us together within our mother's womb and that we're fearfully, wonderfully made, that we're knit together 
certainly within the context of his image, and so he's intimately involved with this from conception all the way to birth. But also, Jesus also knows our deepest needs. There's nothing that's hidden from his sight. And for Zacchaeus, there was a deep need. I really believe this. I, I think that Zacchaeus, again, had this need for freedom, and maybe it was for the sense of financial freedom, maybe it was for the sake of just letting everybody know that he could achieve whatever he wanted to achieve, and he didn't care who it was going to hurt in the process. And, and in the midst of that freedom, though, he found himself, again, as I said already, dealing with some issues of internal bondage. It kind of reminds me of that other story in the Gospels of the prodigal son, where the young son goes to his father and he wants all of his wealth already, all of it, all the, his half of the estate, and his father gladly gives it to him, and he goes off to find freedom, and in the midst of finding freedom, he actually, he doesn't find freedom. He finds internal, internal physical, emotional bondage is what he finds, and, and actually, we're going to unpack that. We're going to take a look at the prodigal son, and Brad Bullock's going to unpack that for us, and we're going to get even to a, even a deeper glimpse into the heart of what Jesus was trying to convey, not only about this son, not only about his brother, but also about the deep love that we have for the Father. We, we all have this longing for freedom. I, I mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, we got a new puppy, Nova is her name, and she's you know just about 10 weeks old now. Nova longs for freedom. She loves to have her freedom, and, uh, and she's so small, and she's so agile, and she's so fast that uh, there have been moments when we've opened up the door and just cracked it a little bit. That little thing has made her way out, and she takes off running as fast as you can. There's no way anybody can catch up with her. And uh, matter of fact, even last night, she did it at 10.30 last night, decided that was the time that she was going to catch, she was going to play that little catch me if you can kind of moment that went in them for about 20 minutes. I was really mad at Nova in that moment. But Nova thinks she wants her freedom, but actually freedom wouldn't be a good thing for Nova. She could potentially get lost in her freedom. She could get hurt in her freedom. She could not find her way back home because of her freedom. So there's a reason why we kind of want to restrict her freedom a little bit. Sometimes we feel that way about God. We think that if we surrender our lives to his leadership, that somehow he's going to restrict our freedom. But Jesus said that actually I've come to set, I've come to set you free and that I came to set the prisoner free. And so Jesus is really all about the freedom that we can find uh, in our relationship with him. And when we turn our lives over to him, it's interesting how our perspective about all these things we think would give us freedom can actually begin to change. We see it actually with Zacchaeus. And so Jesus really, in this moment, really meets Zacchaeus at what I would call a very divine moment. Because Jesus says to him, I must go to your house today. He doesn't ask. He doesn't say, can I go? He said, I must go. And that word must, that, that little phrase there, when we look at it within the context of, of Scripture, is that it really, it has a sense of it being a very deep divine moment. That Jesus, Jesus is saying, there's something that needs to happen in your life, uh, Zacchaeus, and I know what it is, and I must have this moment with you to address the deepest need within your life. And so he has that moment. And not only does he have that moment of that must moment, which all of us have had a divine moment, some of us might even have that divine moment right now, where maybe you're watching online and and you're thinking to yourself, you know, here I was looking for my freedom, but my freedom really hasn't brought me freedom. Um, I'm more unhappy now than I was before. I'm more tied up now than I was before. And, and I think in the heart of this, what Jesus would, would want to say to you in this is that he knows you by name, like Zacchaeus. He knows where you are, like the sycamore tree. And he knows exactly what you need. And he knows what it is that will ultimately ultimately fill and fix that need within your life. And so he's saying, I must, I must spend time with you. I want to spend time with you. I want you to get to know me. I want you to understand me. And I want you to encounter my grace. And because that's really what happens here with Zacchaeus as well. Because Zacchaeus, when he has this moment with Jesus, goes back to his home. Jesus goes back with him. I think there's probably a meal that follows in that moment. And in that encounter, we don't know what all the dialogue was, but something happened in the heart of Zacchaeus, and he found himself suddenly changed from the inside out. That, that's what Jesus does, that he changes us 
from the inside out. Paul talks about it in the book of Corinthians when he says that, that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus, the old is gone and the new has come, that there's a, a change that takes place in our lives when we surrender our lives over to, to Jesus Christ, our Savior. That is Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds, that, that as he begins to, to show us our lives, he begins to show us our deepest needs. As we begin to look into our lives and look at what Jesus ultimately wants from us, suddenly we find ourselves being changed. We, we see things differently. We see stuff differently. Um, we see people differently. As on my way in to, to do this filming, I walked by uh, the bookshelf that we have out there in the lobby of the family, the family center, and I uh, remember suggesting this book by Terry Looper called Sacred Pace. I'd really encourage you to consider picking it up. And Terry was a really rich guy. Terry was acquiring a tremendous amount of wealth. He was achieving all of his success goals, uh, not only in business, but even in the church. But internally, Terry, Terry was lost. He, he, he knew that even though he talked about Jesus and even though he kind of demonstrated that he kind of walked it and he talked it, but he didn't really live it. And internally, he was as lonely as lonely could be, even though he was reaching the top of all his goals. It's really, it's really worth, worth taking a read because some of you, some of you, you might be achieving it all, but you actually may be feeling a little lost in the midst of all of it. And so Zacchaeus finds himself being changed. It, it, says, it says in the text this, but Zacchaeus stood up and he said to the Lord, Lord, look, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. The law would have said, all you got to do is give 20%. But he goes to 50%. And then he says, not only the 50%, but the other 50? <laughs> Out of that, I'll give four times back what I've taken from others. I want to make this right. I, I don't want to live this way any longer. I, I don't want to take advantage of people any longer. I, I want to do what's right. I want to do what's right. And so what Jesus does in that moment is what he does for all of us, is that Jesus has a way of changing your passions. Your passions about people, about your family, about your pursuits, about your priorities, maybe your time, maybe looking at your brokenness in a different way, and maybe even looking at your past and realizing your past does not have to determine your future with Christ. But there's really one more thing that I don't want us to miss on this Liberty Weekend, I guess you could say. <laughs> that is that no one is beyond the reach of God. That's what I love about this. This is that last encounter that Jesus is going to have with a sinful person on his way to Jerusalem. And he's showing us that no one is beyond the reach of God. He says, Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. He says, for the, man, for the son of man came to seek and save that which is lost. Right now, the headlines on the news is the Titanic submarine is lost. It's been lost for days that the entire crew is now feared dead, but there has been an all-out search that has gone on to try to find that sub, to try to save that crew. I mean, other countries have gotten involved and tens of thousands of miles have been surveyed and looked on and listened to. And think about this, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, that, that God went on an all-out all out search for that which was lost, you and for me, and that Jesus went to the cross to lay down his life so that we could encounter him, our living God, and that our lives could be radically changed because of the transforming grace of Jesus Christ extended to all of us. And he offers that to you today. Maybe you're at that spot, and you know you're at that spot, and you're ready to have a divine encounter with him on this Independence Day weekend to just simply say, Lord Jesus, thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for laying down your life for my sins. Thank you for offering your forgiveness for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me, and I ask you to enter into my life 
And I ask you to begin to change me through the presence of your Holy Spirit from this day forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. So if you prayed that prayer, let those know online that you've done that. And, uh, and if anything, I hope that if you're able to be uh, at Pathway next week, you'll, you'll be there. And if not, you'll be back online. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you later. Well, thank you for worshiping with us today. On a normal weekend, like next weekend, we would invite you to come and join us five o'clock on Saturday night, and then nine o'clock and 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. We would love to invite you in to be a part of a worship service here at Pathway. You can always visit our website, pccfw.org, just to learn more about who we are as a church. And we even have an app, PCC at Home. You can download that from your Google or from your Apple Store. Great way to see what we have coming up here at Pathway. So have a wonderful holiday week, and uh, we would love to see you this weekend. Thanks.